dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good morning, I'm Lacey Roberts, and today is Saturday, July 25th. Well, the governor says it is a critical time for Kentucky, and this is why. There are 797 new COVID-19 cases, and now our total is just below 26,000. Deaths are up to 691 after seven more were reported yesterday. And the benchmark to gauge the spread of the virus, the positivity rate for people being tested, moved above 5%. The governor says that he will bring back some restrictions if things do not improve soon, but he did not go into specifics. And on Wednesday, Governor Bashir announced hospitalizations across the state were also increasing. WYMT's Emily Bennett went to Laurel County, which has 314 cases. As COVID-19 cases climb across the Bluegrass State, hospitals are seeing an increase of patients. Keeping track of the local health department, what are the trends there? John Yanes, president of St. Joseph London, says the hospital is constantly evaluating their surge plan. How many ICU beds do we have, PCU beds, uh, airborne isolation rooms, alternative locations that normally we don't put patients. Each week, they have to give a report on their hospitalizations. It is tracked and they reported out as to the infection rate, uh, how many patients are in the hospital, what is our present uh, bed occupancy and bed capacity. But they are seeing a change. At the beginning of the pandemic, many of the patients at St. Joseph London were elderly and more chronically ill, needing ICU level treatment and a ventilator. Recently this week, most of our, the patients that we did have in-house were all on med surge that were not in ICU and they were not on ventilators. Uh, so we are see, definitely experiencing that trend as well. Encouraging people to follow the guidelines and to wear a mask to be able to see a decline in cases. It's an evolving process. I think it's important for everyone to stay tuned. Um, we don't have all the answers and we're discovering more every day. Wanting people to be patient as they learn more about the virus. In London, Emily Bennett, WYMT Mountain News. Now, Gaines did say at the beginning of the pandemic that they saw many people not coming to the hospital for care as they were scared of the virus, but they are seeing the volume return to almost pre-pandemic levels. Well. Brooke Marshall for a look at your forecast this morning. Good morning, Brooke. Like you were talking about earlier, the lower temperatures, I want to call them chilly temperatures, do feel good right now, but we know it is going to be a hot one outside. Yeah, Lacey, it's definitely feeling nice now. So if you are wanting to get outside, the earlier the better because by this afternoon, it's going to get pretty hot outside. But let me go ahead and take you to these cameras because we are seeing some pretty nice conditions overall. I mean, a little bit of fog you can see there in between the mountains. This is at Jackson, Kentucky at our National Weather Service camera. But above that, clear, beautiful, sunny skies. So once this fog, fog kind of disappears here just a little bit, we are going to be seeing nice and sunny conditions the rest of the morning and you can see the fog is kind of just in these patches so if you are going to be out and about this morning if you're that person that's grabbing your keys right now you're about to head out the door take it slow because you are going to want to give yourself some extra time just in case you do run into one of these patches and cause some visibility issues but other than that looking beautiful temperatures anywhere from those mid 60s to those lower 70s right now so like Lacey said definitely feeling nice this morning definitely want to get out the earlier the better because by this afternoon we get pretty hot temperatures going to be jumping into those upper 80s just around 90 degrees so it's going to be pretty hot outside we might see a little bit of a stray shower to cool us off but overall it's definitely looking like a great day to get outside Lacey Thank you, Brooke. And yesterday we learned more about a midweek fight that turned deadly in Perry County. Kentucky State Police say late Wednesday night, two brothers were fighting when police say James Noble ran over his brother, Doug Noble, multiple times with an ATV. Police say James then barricaded himself in a home off Kentucky 451, starting a standoff that lasted for hours. Obviously, as the investigation uh, unfolds and continues on and more information is, is uh, able to be determined, 
Uh, it, there's a possibility that, you know, there could be, you know, we just don't know at this time, uh, at this juncture of the investigation. State police say a woman was in the home at that time. She was not charged with anything and was not hurt. And a hazard couple has been sentenced for labor trafficking cases, excuse me, labor trafficking charges. 26-year-old Jordan Otis was sentenced to 30 years for using force and threats to obtain labor. And 34-year-old Tiffany Walsh was sentenced to nine years for benefiting financially from labor trafficking. Now, according to their plea agreements, Otis and Walsh threatened children in order to get them to make homemade items and sell those items door-to-door -door for about six hours a day. Otis kept all or most of the money for himself and Walsh. And LeBron James is the latest celebrity supporting Breonna Taylor. He played Thursday night's game against the Mavericks in a pair of Nikes, which he inscribed with the hashtag Justice for Breonna. After the game, LeBron spoke to reporters about his involvement in the Black Lives Matter movement and the request for racial inequality in America. He called what happened to Breonna Taylor horrific. As one of the leaders of this league, uh, I want her family to know and I want the state of Kentucky to know um, that we feel for it and we want justice and uh, you know that's what it's all about. What's right is right and what's wrong is wrong and this is a, uh, this is a wrong situation that's going on in my eyes and, and it's in a, lot of, a lot of other eyes not only here in America but I bet in the world as well. LeBron's teammate Quinn Cook also wrote Brianna's name on his shoes. Well, weddings look a little different now, especially depending on where it's held. Governor Andy Bashir clarified that weddings at venues are not limited by the 10-person gathering limit, while weddings held at private homes are. Shelby Lofton shows us how one wedding venue is meeting the guidelines. Couples look for the hottest spots to get married. The Governor Bashir is implementing guidelines to keep their venue from becoming a hot spot. If we go around the guidelines and, and this thing is spread at our wedding, what will that, what will that do to how we feel about it and, and, and long term uh, what it means to us as a couple? Many have opted for a backyard wedding, but the guest list has been cut short. Bashir says there's no way to ensure they're sanitizing and mask wearing to the degree that is required at private homes. Wedding planner Becca Lowe says it's easier to adjust guest lists in special event spaces. A wedding of 150 people especially with an outdoor space attached, we can we can make it safe for everyone to attend here. On top of capping occupancy at 50%, venues have to make space so everyone can practice social distancing and keep a list of guests in case there is a need for contact tracing. We are temperature checking every guest as they walk through our doors just to make sure they're not running a fever. Um, we are saying masks are required unless you're sitting at your table actively eating or drinking. Lowe says her weddings are monitored by a safety captain. We are asking them to follow these rules. I think it makes it a little easier than a bride just sending an email and coaxing her family to follow the rules. So by the power vested in them by the state of Kentucky, Can everyone please stay in? six feet apart, they vow to wear masks, serve individually and distance themselves until COVID-19 <laughs> departs. In Lexington, Shelby Lofton, WKYT. The governor said that he does not anticipate anyone being fined for going around the rules at a wedding at a private home, but he cautioned couples to be careful. And Eastern Kentuckians affected by furloughs and layoffs due to COVID-19 are now eligible for career assistance through a $2.4 million grant from excuse me, a $2.4 million National Dislocated Worker Grant that was given to Eastern Kentucky Concentrated Employment Program, or EKSEP. The new program, We Work EKY, is to help those without jobs and their spouses connect with new job opportunities through virtual training and to provide longevity through work partnerships such as through Teleworks, SOAR, and now even the University of the Cumberlands. Dr. Karen Wright, the project manager over the grant, says the first step is to just make the call. What I want people to understand that, you know, we're, we, we have a passion for this. This is not just we got this grant and, you know, and oh my gosh, we have to spend the money. Really, truly hope that people will take advantage of this opportunity, especially given the fact that, you know, there may be some funding that's not available um, that has been available in the past.
$600 on top of unemployment. For more information on how to apply for this program, you can visit our website, WYMT.com. And in an effort to stop COVID-19, is to hold off on in-person services for a little bit. It's not an order or a mandate, but just a conversation. Nick Oliver talked to one pastor about the decision for his congregation. Churches in the state are split on holding services. Many are back to holding in-person services. Others have continued with drive up or virtual experiences. With over 700 new cases announced Friday, the governor is asking for pastors to hold off on face-to-face -face services for at least the next two weeks. We remember the stories of Kentucky State Police heading to churches and leaving tickets on people's door telling they have to now self-quarantine. The governor says he's staying away from the word mandate and really just asking. This is, let me be clear, there's no mandate, there is no order, there's no executive order, there's no regulation, there's nothing like that. But I recommended for the next two Sundays, with the escalating number of cases that we have, that it's a very dangerous time, uh, and, and recommended that people do the virtual or the drive up services. I am so over this virus, but the virus is not over me and Pastor Tony Stang is leading his congregation at First Baptist Church in Winchester through strictly online services. He says that's the way it's going to stay for now, but is glad the governor is asking and not telling this time around. We want to be respectful and we want to uh, think highly of our constitution because that's what separates us from every other country and so we need to be adaptive to our current situation and our current context and online church is the way for that to happen. The governor says he hopes church leaders will socially distance their congregations and require folks to wear masks inside. At the Capitol, Nick Oliver, WYMT Mountain News. And Randy Brown worked as a coal miner for 38 years, but for the last five years, he has been battling his diagnosis. Five years ago, Brown found out that he had the most severe type of black lung disease, which created a lot of unknowns for Randy and his wife, Debbie. He says his family was at risk of losing him before the end of this year, but recently received a double lung transplant and now looks forward to the memories to come. I, I lay and gurgle like I was dying, you know. I couldn't lay down. I had to sit up, lean up and get an arm. And, yeah. You couldn't and, put his back on nothing. Uh, yeah, I, I, was, I, was, I was done. So yeah. when they, they get, I got that phone call and they said, uh, we got you some lungs. I said, yes, let's go for it, you know. The Browns say that they hope to one day meet the family whose donor gave them a chance to continue making memories. And Coal City Coffee held its grand opening yesterday morning in Jenkins. The ribbon cutting was held just outside of the coffee shop, and the ribbon was cut by Tom Lane, the president and founder of Smile Faith. The organization helps the community with dental needs. Lane tells us the coffee shop is a way for Smile Faith Appalachia to get funding. We, of course, have a director here and some people that work with her, you know, and, and Smile Faith is carrying the burden of that. So. Uh, uh, Appalachia mission here is wanting to be self-sustaining, that the people, the community do what they need to do to make and cover it overhead. Because the buildings are all paid for, everything is here, and it can, it's, it's a gift to the community. You can try the fresh coffee, donuts, and pastries Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. until noon. Well, coming up on Mountain News this morning, it's been 30 years since a landmark disability law today. And today, the fight continues how the ADA helps shape life for those with disabilities. And today is going to be nice, but we may still see some showers this afternoon. I'll have more details on that next.